When you're learning to grow your audience to do marketing, you might hear of this core idea that you're supposed to get people's attention, right? Because if you don't get their attention, how will you have their attention in order to deliver your message, in order to sell your product or service? If you don't have their attention, you can't build trust and therefore you can't really get business done, right? Well, the problem with following that thread, which is so common when you learn marketing, is that you start to learn attention-getting methods that have worked for other people or work generally for humans, but don't necessarily feel authentic and worthwhile to you. So for example, uh, if you're learning how to make videos that go viral, uh, you're going to learn that the first three seconds of each video is so important. It's the most important thing. And you got to like get, get their attention in the first three seconds. I mean, literally, I saw a video coach said, hey, everyone, look what I'm doing. See, this, this kind of thing, you should do that at the beginning of your video so that you get people's attention. And then they will, okay, yeah, you might get people's attention, but then it feels empty because you can sometimes tell that the person isn't doing it out of their own authentic joy and uh, authentic personality. And they're doing stuff to, you know, whether this is <clears throat> done in video or done in writing, um, the, the creator knows whether that voicing, that style, the way they just tried to get attention is true with a capital T for them. Um, is it how they would be with, uh, with a friend, right? Um, is it how, is it how they believe all humans should act or that there should be more people who do this? I think that's another way for me to gauge whether or not it's true for me. It's like, I wish more humans did this. And for me, I don't wish more humans did this at the beginning of a video because then everyone starts doing this and it's, um, it's distracting one <laughs> it number two, it, um, it feels like a fake performance is what it does. It feels like they are manipulating me essentially. And authentic marketing is where we try to show our best and truest and more, most worthwhile selves, right? From a place of enjoyment, because if you are enjoying a way of expression, then it is authentic to you. And also from a place of serving and connecting with our ideal audience. When you are just, I always think of this as a child, an innocent and loving child who is, you know, just meeting a new classmate. Let's say they're in school, they're, they're maybe they're at recess and they're meeting a new classmate and um, they don't, you know, the classmate doesn't know them or trust them, but the child wants to bring that, that new classmate into in, 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 into the circle. And so the child's like, Hey, come on over here. Or however they express themselves, maybe they'll go over there quietly and sit with a new classmate and say, well, um, what are you having for lunch or whatever, you know, or they might, you know, depending on the personality of the child, they might go over and say, Hey, let me tell you a joke or something like that. Right. It's like every child has their personality. And when they yearn to connect and when they're doing it from a place of feeling confident and comfortable with themselves, right? So expressing their best self and they're doing a place of enjoyment. That is the most beautiful, authentic, connected expression. And if the new classmate is meant for, <laughs> meant to be your friend, then the new classmate will respond well. And the same thing with authentic marketing. You're not trying to make sure everybody who sees your video or reads your thing or sees your website is the right person to sign up with you. No, no, no. Authentic marketing is about, again, enjoying your authentic, connected expression and then noticing who signs up, noticing 
who reacts well to your expression. Because if you are trying to make everybody like you, you become very shallow. You become merely performative and not deeply connected to your soul's expression. However, if you do whatever spiritual practice that you do to continually connect back to your deepest, most confident self, which comes from, I believe, a divine source, but whatever practice you do that connects you to your, you could say your highest self, your deepest, most loving self, your most comfortable, confident self. Now, when I say comfortable, I want to make sure I'm saying, I'm not saying you got to stay, you should always stay in your comfort zone. Sometimes you stretch yourself. It's, it's like, sort of like you, 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 you fear to expand your, towards your true self, your, your greatest potential, right? So sometimes expressing your authentic self is not comfortable, but it feels alive. It feels true. It feels courageous. Okay. And when you express yourself in that way, the people who are meant for you are going to also feel enlivened. And when that happens, that resonance is worth way more than any kind of visual interruption techniques or any kind of clever copywriting or clever storytelling if it's not feeling true for you or starting your piece or starting your website in, in this particular way that some marketer taught you, you should start it to get people's attention. If it doesn't feel true to your expression, which means you need to experiment with your expression in different ways, right? That's part of the, I think, the fun and joy of content creation is you have an opportunity every day, if you create every day or several times a week, let's say, to experiment with expressing yourself courageously, truthfully, in a way that you feel is worthwhile for the world. That's the thing. Because whenever I start doing marketing tactics that are supposed to get your attention, it doesn't feel worthwhile to me. It feels empty. It feels like, well, I, I, there's a question that changed my life years ago that really started my journey of authenticity. And the, the question was, if I only had six months left to live, what would I do with my content creation? That, that, you know, that was, that's, we'll, we'll stay with this question because that, that question can, can be applied in many beautiful ways. But if I only had six months left to live, what would that mean for my content creation? I would want to express my most loving, uh, courageous, helpful self that I can on my, in my content. Like that's what I came to. And so I'm not going to be trying to get your attention in ways that feel shallow to me. I'm going to continually deepen and dive into what is my, what is my soul? How, how does my soul express itself? If it were to express itself fully in this life, that's what felt worthwhile to me. And that worthwhile act became, well, sustainable, right? Because if you're doing things to get people's attention so that you can deliver some message, you'll always, well, the problem is if you keep practicing these attention-getting methods, it sadly becomes part of you, even though you always feel like it's not really your true highest self, your biggest self, your most courageous and authentic self. It always, because you see that other people are using the same tactics and it's always a means to an end. It's always, oh, I'm going to do this fake thing before I will get the trust, you know, before I can deliver my message. And so the means to an end is really what manipulation is. Manipulation, when you're doing something so that you can get an audience or that you can get their trust or whatever, Without being truthfully, that's what you wanted to express. It felt worthwhile and uh, virtuous and authentic to you.
then it's a means to an end. And that means to an end makes you a shallow, shallower and shallower person or, or less and less connected to your soul's expression. That is very, that's, that's a sad existence. Um, it's not, it's, and it's, a, it's, you end up building a business where you're, you know, a, year, a few years down the road, you're like, what am I doing? This doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel true. That's what my, that was my first five years of my business. That's what I know. I mean, 2009 to 2014, essentially, I was doing the performative things, try to get an audience and get sales and things. And even though some of that worked, it wore down on my conscience year by year by year until I said, I can't do it anymore. It's not worth my life. This is where, it's where I asked myself, what if I had six months left to live? It's not worth my life. And so I said, can I experiment with a truer and more alive way of doing so-called marketing that I can sustain for the rest of my life? Because the marketing itself is worthwhile. It's not a means to an end. When I do my marketing, I am allowing my soul to express itself in service to my audience. Now, knowing my audience, of course, over time as I've gotten to know my audience, I felt more compassion and more connection to them. And so therefore, my soul calibrates to say, of course, I want to serve my audience and connect to my audience from the truest place possible. And so I, I do that. I do that from my soul, from a, just like from the, from the child connecting with a classmate, you know, the new classmate is, oh, you like, you like, uh, you like the color red? Oh, I have this red thing in my, you know, in my backpack I want to show you, right? It's something I like too, but in my backpack, I, I have several things I like. I like green things. I like red things. I like blue things or whatever. And my classmate likes the, likes the red. Oh, let me show you, let me show you the, the, my, my red part, which is also true for me right? And it's connected to, and then once we become friends, maybe I'll show you the blue thing because you might like the blue, you might realize you like the blue thing also, right? And maybe you had hidden it from me, but now I show, you see what I mean? So that's, that is the difference between mainstream marketing, which is so adult and calculating. It is calculating from beginning to end. That's adult mainstream marketing versus the more childlike, authentic, loving, joyful, connected, liberated marketing where the soul is being liberated to connect and express itself in a very enjoyable way. So don't try to get attention. Be yourself and see who shows up. See who connects with your authentic nature and this is the beautiful thing about the internet now right it's like when when I, I think of my my parents generation my dad was a business owner an entrepreneur and when he had to get sales he had to travel to different countries it's expensive flying around and going to meet with businesses that's the only way I mean he, he would send letters too but the letters oftentimes were ignored. So he had to go and go on boots on the ground and go and actually expensive. I mean, even if you are trying to meet people locally, you have to spend the energy of traveling and making sure they're open and, and they're, <laughs> it's very expensive. Whereas now, my, our generation, this generation, we can post something on social media and reach people all over the world hundreds of people, at least dozens of people. If you have a small audience, you're reaching dozens of people around the world, around the country, around you. And then, and then they, they will share your thing if it's resonant with them, with their friends and their connection. And then now you've grown your audience by a few more dozen or a few more hundred. I mean, I can't even believe how easy it is. Now. I mean, my, my parents' generation, look at, look at what I'm doing now. I'm like, that's so much easier. You don't have to travel. You don't have to put yellow page ads and spend that kind of, oh, we do social media ads. That's, but it's like, you don't have, it's like the, the ads had literally such a limited space on, on a single yellow book, right? Uh, yellow, yellow pages. It's like they publish them how often? Once every several months. And it's only a limited number of pages. Whereas now with social media, people can scroll, scroll, scroll. Every day they're scrolling and see new, seeing new things. 
I could place an ad today and have you see it today. I mean, it is it's like we really should not complain anymore of how easy it is for us to reach potential kindred spirits all around the world. Let's appreciate, let's appreciate how precious this is and spend our time doing that. And, and truthfully, I think most of us watching this probably don't spend enough time experimenting and expressing our authentic self, experimenting with different aspects of our authentic self, and then noticing what resonates and then express and then leaning more into that. That's the, that's the part where I'm not saying, you know, the, 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 an analytical mind is, is not needed here. It is needed where the analytical mind is needed with authentic marketing is where you first start with authentic expression. We start, start from the heart. We start from within rather than being influenced by external factors. Say, you're Scott, you got to do this to get attention. No, we start from the heart. We start from the soul. We experiment and express. We practice courage. That's the beautiful thing I love about authentic marketing is it is a process of personal development. Like that's why it's worthwhile in itself. Like you're practicing the virtues of courage and love and compassion for your audience and uh, faith in, in, in your highest self or your divine self to keep connecting that it's going to be okay. It will, it will be, it will work if you just keep showing up, right? Like you're practicing these virtues, which is worthwhile in itself. Like, whether or not you ever get, I mean, you're, you're going to get clients and, and customers for sure if you keep showing up consistently. But, but even if you didn't, okay, even if you didn't get customers from this one video or from this piece of writing you're doing or from, or from this authentic image that you're creating, the practice of your virtues, of courage, of faith, of, com of compassion, of love, of joy, the practice itself is worthwhile, you see. It is worthwhile. Like if you drop dead the next day, you still spent the day, the, the day of marketing in a worthwhile way of practicing these, these worth, these noble virtues. That's why I love authentic marketing because I'm practicing these virtues. No matter if anybody likes this, no matter if I ever get a single client, I don't, it doesn't matter as much as the practice of my soul, right? And once we do that, we keep practicing, 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 expressing, expressing, expressing. It's all worthwhile along the way. And then afterwards, we use our analytical mind to go back, you know, once a month, let's say, we go back and see from the previous month's soul's expressions, which pieces resonated the most. I mean, again, the beauty of social media and, that, and the power of it, how easy it is for us to experiment and see which of our experiments lands with the world. And then we say, oh my gosh, out of, out of the 10 things I, I did or the 30 things I did in the past month, these six things, these nine things, these 12 things resonated the most with the world, with my idea, because I was expressing myself authentically. And if that resonated, that means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study those 12 things analytically now and say, what parts of myself was I expressing? How can I lean more into those strengths? You see, be yourself. Don't try to get attention. Be yourself first from the heart and then use your analysis to say what aspects of your true self should you lean more into because that is in service to the world also. I hope this is helpful. Thank you so much for watching <laughs> me express my authentic self. And I, I hope this is encouraging for you. I hope this allows you to practice uh, marketing that is truly worthwhile for your soul. Thanks for watching.